While pellet cookers are a great way to get started in barbecue, they're actually holding you back. And we're gonna talk about that today on the podcast. You're listening to the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast. So you might have got started on uh, your Pitmaster journey, uh, just going to the store and picking up, you know, the first kind of cooker that, uh, you know, that you came across that looked like the easiest one to run, and you chose a pellet cooker probably. I know I did back in the day. Um, that is literally how I got my start. And I remember, like, it wasn't a month after I got that pellet cooker that I started looking around and seeing, like, you know, my food just doesn't look like or taste like other food I've had cooked on, like, real smokers, like wood burners or, or uh, cookers that burn charcoal. And uh, I, I decided to start doing some research, you know, and it eventually led me to, to just understand that, you know, pellet cookers are actually holding me back. I, I need to get out there and learn how to light a fire, you know, for real. I need, uh, I need to experience the same thing these other guys are getting with their food. So we're going to cover a few topics here about, you know, a couple of the reasons I believe that they, they could be holding you back on your uh, journey as a pit master and why that you should start looking into another, another way to cook. And I'm going to start with one rule first. The one rule of barbecue is you can't have too many cookers. It's okay. You need to have more than one. You don't have to get rid of your pellet grill. You can keep it, but you definitely need other kinds. And the more you cook on different kinds of equipment, the better your skill will be. After all, this is the Pitmaster Secrets podcast, right? And so we're going to help you learn those secrets. So the the first the first point is that you know you're you're uh, you're not actually tending a fire when you're when you're running a pellet cooker. Um, you know while that may sound pretty basic, you know the the skill set behind you know actually lighting a fire and having to maintain that fire and using real unrefined you know fuel sources like real wood. Um, is very important to be able to get the full, you know, flavor of barbecue. Your, your, you know, the live fire. There's, there's actually a lot more happening in that fire than, than just, you know, heat and smoke. I mean, there's other, there's other products of the combustion process from wood that are actually giving you the flavor that you're gonna, that you get on real authentic, you know, like brisket, Texas bar. Why do they say Texas barbecue or Kansas City style barbecue? It's not the sauce. A lot of people think it's the sauce and the toppings and stuff, but it's actually a lot deeper than that. You know, the whenever you get into Texas style barbecue, these guys like Aaron's, Aaron Franklin, and all these other famous barbecue joints, they're cooking on a stick burner. You know, and and that's why that barbecue sets itself apart is they're operating a live fire. Um, you know, pellet fuel is very refined, so you're not going to have uh, a lot of the uh, resins and the and the moisture that's in the wood and like the ash the even the ash you know you might not see ash on your food but really as that air mass is moving through your cooker that's where the flavor is coming from flavor is nothing more flavor and odor is nothing more than things that are airborne literal particles that are airborne that you get to taste and, and smell and so you get that element from the the wood smoke it, especially when it's thin and blue so you know the other thing about it is the pellet cookers are trying to achieve that flavor but they send you into accessory overload and what i mean by that is like there's always some kind of a thing that you got to buy to put wood in your pellet cooker so that like it could be one of them them little tubes that you put the uh, sawdust in or uh, you know wood chips or a small chunk of wood but the thing is is when you put that stuff near that burn pot it over fires it's hard to control now the computer doesn't know what to do right so you're going to wind up overheat overshooting temp or uh, you know it's just a hassle all the way around it's a bigger mess to clean up so you know you're you wind up getting into a, a, a situation where you're just too dependent on an, on a computer to run that that cooker you know once you once you turn that button on if that thing was if you cleaned it last time and you turn the button on and it's full of pellets that thing's gonna light up 
and from then on, if you set it, it's going to run 225. And while that's very convenient, you don't, you're not really able to use, you know, the the spikes and stuff to your advantage in the cooker. I mean, you're going to have a 10 degree swing maybe on a pellet cooker, but if you want, if you want to uh, add a new split of wood on that fire, you know, you can't do that in a pellet cooker. You're just going to have the same refined fuel going through that that cooker fed by the computer that that's going to it's going to keep whatever temperature you set it for but you're not going to get that when you throw a wood split on the fire there's a little burst of white smoke when you first throw it on there now we're heating up that wood for the first time now all of that moisture that's in the wood is coming out and it's vaporizing and it's going through the cooker with the air mass you can't get that from a pellet cooker because all of that has been removed from it but that computer, you know, it, it just runs the pit at that normal pace, you know, and you're not going to be able to uh, experience what it's like to, to have the need to add fuel to the fire. So the computer in that pellet cooker running, the, running it for you, you wind up being totally dependent on that situation. And if you lose electricity or something like that, your, your pit goes out. You know, there's there's a whole nother list of problems. You can't go to the river and cook. Matter of fact, I saw an ad a while back for a company that makes a power supply just for guys with pellet cookers. And I thought that was hilarious because like, now you're surviving on a battery. <laughs> so, you know, you're gonna have to bring electricity with you wherever you go to be able to cook on that pellet cooker. So, you know, working with live fire, you alleviate a whole lot of computerized gadgets and expensive things. That you don't that you don't need if you're cooking on a pellet cooker I mean on a stick burner or you're cooking with charcoal so I would challenge you to go in your in your kitchen let's do this if you're currently convinced that cooking on a uh, pellet cooker is is better than uh, anything else out there like you know it's okay for you to feel that way but I would challenge you to do this go inside and cook the same exact recipe your, your layers of flavor, sauce, rub, whatever it is, go inside and cook that exact timeline, your exact uh, flavor profile, the exact same food on, uh, on, the, on the oven in the house, whether it be electric or gas. Cook that same product in the house on the oven as you would in your pellet cooker outside and look at the difference in, in, uh, in flavor. Now you will get a different texture. You will build a better bark probably, but you won't get that much difference in your flavor profile. Maybe a very, very subtle amount of smoke difference in that. But then also do repeat the same test on a buddy's stick burner or have someone do the test for you either way and then sample the difference in, in flavor between live fire and the other two methods. And I think you'd be shocked because like the pellets the, the pellets themselves, they have, to, they have to get all the moisture out of a pellet in order to keep that pellet compressed together. And in the, pro, the manufacturing process, you lose what you would have gotten in the wood or charcoal. Uh, so anyway, I would encourage you to, uh, to test that out and uh, let me know your results. And uh, pay close attention to the difference in flavor when you do it. Um, so I don't want you to be held back on your journey just because of ease of use of, uh, of a pellet cooker. You know, make sure and branch out a little bit. If you're interested in getting started on your journey to get towards a stick burner, I would encourage you to go to the link in the description of this podcast, um, whether you're on YouTube or on a podcast platform. And uh, there's a little, click that link and there's a little form on there that's going to help you uh, find out what you need to know in order to build your own cooker or have one built for you. So anyway, guys, till next time, we'll see you later. <laughs>